So, in this particular lecture, uh, we will uh, focus on uh, two uh, biopolymers, the xanthan gum and polyisoprene. And uh, in a few lecture on uh, conformations and structure of biopolymers, we will look at casein and pectin in much more detail. Uh, just to remind you that uh, these biopolymers are used quite extensively in various applications. And uh, so, it is important for us to recognize and understand uh, concepts related to these biopolymers and how they are uh, uh, relevant in terms of being a model system for us to design new sets of materials from a sustainability point of view. So, let us look at uh, the xanthan gum as an example. So, again it comes from a microorganism, but uh, when you add this in water, uh, it acts as a viscosity modifier or a thickener and therefore, it is uh, used quite commonly. Uh, it is made by uh, a bacteria as I mentioned already. It has a fairly high molecular weight, molar mass is quite high and a very important uh, uh, chemistry or physical chemistry of this uh, compound is related to the presence of hydroxyl and carboxylic acid groups, which lead to very significant uh, interactions, mainly hydrogen bonding in this polymer. So, whenever we put this polymer in water, because of uh, interactions which are between uh, xanthan gum and water, xanthan gum and uh, xanthan gum molecules, we have a very rich behavior that arises. So, we have uh, mainly a backbone and there is also anions present on uh, this. We will soon see that uh, we have COO minus and of course, a counter ion which may be proton in uh, this xanthan gum case. And its applications are various uh, applications related to uh, from toothpaste, uh, foodstuffs uh, like pudding and ice cream and uh, very important if in crude oil recovery. Uh, we, we have a phrase called enhanced oil recovery. If you are interested, you can uh, read more about it. In fact, many of the gums are used in enhanced oil recovery. Uh, another e important uh, example of a gum which is very common, which is a biopolymer is guar gum. Just try searching about guar gum and where does it originate from and who is the largest uh, producer and supplier of guar gum. And you will be surprised that it is uh, a vegetable which we are quite uh, familiar with in different parts of India. Now, uh, going further, uh, the xanthan gum depending on which state it is in, it can have a different molecular structure. So, generally as we have seen, we have been drawing uh, a ma macro molecule like this. So, generally in a solution state, uh, quite often it will be what is called a coil state. But for xanthan gum in solid state, what we have is an extended chain with a helical conformation because of hydrogen bonds. Because these uh, hydroxyl and uh, carboxylic acid groups are there, they ca there is extensive hydrogen, carb uh, hydrogen bonding possible in these materials and in the end, what you end up getting is uh, some uh, helical structure like this. And then it is an extended chain as opposed to a coil. So, therefore, this is called a extended extended chain. So, now going ahead and looking at uh, the property which is important from the point of view of application, the solution state of uh, xanthan. And uh, interestingly here, depending on whatever the conditions of the solution, uh, different states can be seen, different conformation states can be seen. So, uh, the conformation change depending on what are the ionic interactions. How do we modify ionic interactions? Can you think of uh, we have ions like CO minus, H plus, Na plus, K plus, Ca 2 plus, SO 4 2 minus, all these are ionic species and they of course interact with each other. So, how is it possible to modify interactions between these? So, there are two ways to do it generally. One is by changing concentration of ions themselves. And, uh, Concentration of ions can be changed by changing pH or by adding more salt or having less salt. So, what is called the ionic strength. So, 
So, one way to uh, modify the interactions between ions is to change their concentrations or to change ionic strength of the medium. The other is of course, temperature because uh, interaction with respect to the thermal energy which is present will determine how strong is the interaction because thermal energy is always present which causes the molecules to undergo different conformations. It allows bonds to occupy different energy states. So, thermal energy is always uh, propelling molecules or bonds to change from one state to the other. And if interaction energy is strong, then uh, thermal energy and interaction energy ratio is what is important in terms of determining whether the molecules and bonds will occupy one state or the other. So, flipping back and forth between different states is very crucially related to the interaction energy on one side and thermal energy. So, temperature will always play a key role in terms of determining how strong the interactions are. So, in case of uh, low ionic strength or high temperature, you can see it is the ratio right. So, whenever high temperature is there, the ratio is less. If the So, let us say ionic uh, interaction is in uh, numerator, uh, thermal energy is in the de denominator. So, you can see that how this both of these mean the same thing. So, if uh, this is the case when it is low ionic strength and high temperature, we have a random coil state. And if we have low temperature or high ionic strength, then we have a rigid helical rod. Now, one of the things that uh, you may want to consider is uh, whether uh, this is just qualitative or can we actually get quantitative estimates of how much extended a chain is and how coil like a chain is, what is the size of the polymer chain when it is in coil state or what is the size of the polymer when it is in extended chain. Yes, the answer is yes, we can get quantitative estimates. So, let us continue looking at this xanthan gum as a molecule. Uh, just uh, look at this diagram for the details. Okay. Look at uh, the complexity of a biopolymer. What are the features that you can observe? Uh, since the first lecture, we have talked about variety of concepts. We have talked about backbone, we have talked about side group, we have talked about branching, we have talked about uh, polyelectrolyte, we have talked about uh, interactions between macromolecules we have talked about degree of polymerization. Can you spot all of these things in this picture? And if you can, then you have uh, got lot of grasp of uh, these aspects related to polymers. You can just pause here and maybe try to identify all the things that you can uh, in this graph. Let us continue. These are all the features that are there in this and this is the beauty of a natural polymer lot of uh, variety of uh, contents are there which allow lot of interactions to take place and therefore, this polymer to exhibit one type of property or the other. So, of course, the backbone itself is uh, there. You can see that there is a side branch. The molar mass uh, of course, depends on the degree of polymerization, the interactions. So, here uh, very importantly, we have intra macromolecular and inter macromolecule. And uh, just the way we have been drawing a polymer macromolecule, you can notice that uh, one part of uh, polymer uh, molecule can interact with another part. So, therefore, intramolecular interactions are possible, same macromolecule interacting with another. And of course, next to this we can have another uh, macromolecule and therefore, uh, we also can have intermolecular interactions. So, in uh, this case, all the interactions that are possible that we have talked about uh, for example, hydrogen bonding or ionic interactions, they are all uh, possible between two xanthan gum molecules or within one xanthan gum macromolecule. 
The other important thing that we have spoken about is dissociation to lead to a polyanion where polymer chain itself has a negative groups and uh, there is of course the counter ion. The counter ion is not drawn in this picture but I am sure those of you who have been following the lecture will immediately spot that this is the COOH group which leads to this polymer chain being polyelectrolytic or ionic. And so what is of interest from a practical point of view is what are the conformations that a polymer molecule takes and uh, what is the state of interest in the, so in this case it is the solution state which is of importance and uh, we would like to know whether it is taking an extended uh, conformation or it is taking a coil like conformation. In terms of application it might help for you to think of why should viscosity be determined based on what type of conformation a polymer takes. Just to think of this further, you could think of a beaker in which you have coil like objects and how easy or difficult will be to stir this as opposed to another beaker in which you have extended chains of xanthan gum. So, if you want to stir one versus the other, clearly if viscosity is different then the amount of energy required to stirring will be different. So, will it be different is something for you to think of. Let us continue our journey and look at another example of a natural polymer. In this case, this is from a tree. Several uh, trees uh, are uh, producers of gums and uh, natural rubber and uh, most common uh, that we uh, use is a natural rubber tree and this is an example of a cis polyisoprene. So, uh, cis and trans isomers are possible. The application of natural rubber is elastomeric, something which stretches and when you release it, it comes back. So, that is an elastic uh, rubber band kind of an application. Quite importantly, uh, in, uh, in vibration mounts, natural rubber is still the most preferred uh, uh, material to be used and in this case, it is a damping application. An instrument or an equipment, uh, when it is running, it vibrates and uh, that vibration uh, will be passed on to the floor and from the floor to the other and in fact, the reverse way also. If something else is vibrating, it will come to the instrument and it might affect its functionality. So, generally this instrument or equipment is mounted on the floor and uh, there is a what is called a vibration isolation device which is used because you do not want vibration from one equipment to carry to the other or vibration of a floor being carried to the equipment or equipment carrying its vibration to floor so that the people around there will feel the vibration. So, vibration isolation is a very important application. It is there in uh, vehicles also when we travel. So, th this is a very important engineering application and natural rubber mounts are extremely important in this vibration isolation application. What natural rubber is able to do is to absorb all the mechanical energy and therefore, it does not transmit the vibrations. So, mechanical energy is nothing but vibrations, it absorbs all those vibrations and does not transmit the mechanical energy. Natural rubber is produced by trees uh, using enzymes. So, proteins are used in catalysis. So, therefore, we call it enzymatic polymerization. Generally, we harvest this as a LaTeX. So, this is a common term used in uh, polymer science. Whenever we have a dispersion, so if we have a dispersion of polymer or oligomer particles in a solvent. So, it is also called a LaTeX. So, in fact, paints are also examples of LaTeX. So, it uh, contains uh, some amount of rubber and then of course, other biological uh, chemicals and then uh, rubber uh, has to be obtained by coagulation. 
So, in this case coagulation is a process where dispersion is broken. Broken is a common English uh, parlance term, but more imp uh, uh, you can uh, coagulation is the term which specifies that these uh, particles which were there will start coagulating with each other and then form uh, exclude the solvent and therefore, you can form the solid natural rubber piece. And uh, so, just looking at uh, how does uh, uh, a natural rubber uh, trees uh, polyisoprene look like, here uh, what I have shown is trans polyisoprene. So, I hope uh, through your uh, uh, earlier chemistry knowledge, you should be able to draw how does a cis poly isoprene look like. So, just to draw this, if we have this H 2 C, C and then of course, if you remember from your, uh, this is the example of, so this C H 3 group and then this is H. So, this is an example of cis poly isoprene. So, as we have seen uh, rubber is obtained by coagulation of the latex and uh, in this state uh, natural rubber is not very useful, because it still will have um, more liquid like uh, properties and uh, what when we want to use it as a vibration mount or when we want to use it as an elastomer, we need a solid like uh, character, where these uh, latex particles uh, should get joined with each other and uh, this is done basically by cross linking the rubber. What is uh, cross linking is uh, basically using sulfur to vulcanize and this is something of course, from school onwards you might have uh, learnt about. So, if you have these rubber chains which are isolated, what you can do is uh, incorporate, it, incorporate uh, sulfur and combine. And there are various interesting ways in which uh, sulfur can uh, interact and so it can form a cyclic uh, where the it is not really cross linking two molecules, it can uh, form uh, multiple S and then only it can form cross link. And so, variety of uh, the chemistry of uh, cross linking of rubber is also very diverse, but generally we use uh, uh, sulfur vulcanization. There are other many uh, cross linking agents also using which cross linking can be done. A biopolymer example that we looked at in terms of xanthan gum, we saw it was so rich in terms of the interactions. There were uh, hydrogen bonding interactions, there were uh, ionic interactions and uh, so everything det was determined based on the strength and weaknesses of these interactions. In this biopolymer example, the interactions are in fact not relevant at all. In fact, this is an example of what we will call an ideal system. I do not know if you can uh, remember which other context you have usually seen ideal in terms of a chemical uh, uh, in, in either thermodynamics or physical chemistry, we, we talk of ideal gas. And what do we mean by ideal gas? Is a set of molecules where there are no interactions. We say that ideal gas is a molecules which can overlap with each other and so on. So, there are various ways in which we try to signify that interaction between molecules are not important when we have an ideal gas. So, similarly here when we have an ideal system, interaction between macromolecules is not very important in terms of determining its properties. So, this elastomeric uh, properties as well as uh, vibration mount properties, how are they, how can we explain them using no interactions. So, in fact, in this case the key uh, is a segment of polymer. So, we have talked about for example, uh, a section of polymer chain between cross link points and this is a word which we have used earlier also defined it called a segment. So, what segments do is pretty much determining how will this rubber component behave. When we stretch the rubber for a rubber band, elastic rubber band kind of application, quite often we are doing this at a reasonably low rate. And so, in this case the segments also get stretched 
and when we release it, the segment want to come back to coil like state. So therefore, interaction between segments is not important. How a segment gets stretched and how it comes back is sufficient for us to explain the elastomeric behavior of a rubber. When we are using it as a vibration mount, then again, in that case, we have a, a vibration mount. Let us say this is the mount and then we have another component which is let us say vibrating and this uh, is basically uh, vibrating either up and down or depending on the instrument. Uh, so, it is going basically this while the bottom is the rubber component which is the mount. So, now what happens is again the segments do not get stretched, but the segments start doing all kinds of conformational changes. So, a segment which was in one instant like this may change uh, its uh, conformation and become uh, like this, again uh, may change its conformation and uh, become uh, something like this. And so, what you have is segment keeps on changing its conformation. In this process, it absorbs the mechanical energy and dissipates it in the form of heat. So, therefore, whatever is the energy which is being transmitted by this vibrating part, it is absorbed in this vibration mount. So, energy gets absorbed and in all of this explanation, I did not really use how are the rubber macromolecules interacting with each other. So, therefore, uh, this is an example where what segments are doing, whether they are getting stretched and recovering or they are changing conformations and segmental motion basically can explain both elastomeric as well as a vibration mount uh, applications of this. So, here therefore, we have seen two beautiful examples of biopolymers. In one case, xanthan gum where molecular interactions was everything that was important and rubber where molecular interactions could be neglected to explain the features of its application. Just to remind you again, when we say an ideal system, what we mean is molecular interactions can be neglected and which is what we did in case of explaining elastomeric and vibration mount properties of rubber. So, with this uh, we have come to close to this uh, lecture on uh, biopolymers. Thank you.